Hello and welcome to another episode of Dave Tripp and Couch Therapy. We're doing this a little bit earlier than I would regularly because I want to do something midweek that by getting this out of the way I will be freed up for and we'll get a cool video on Saturday. So ultimately that's the goal that I have for this. The topic of the video was fairness. And I think that this is interesting to discuss because it affects all people coming over to work in Japan, whether you're at the beginning of the process or you, for example, have already arrived here and are working, but then by extension, it matters for any point of life that you're in and uh, your sort of expectations for life as you go through it. So let's dive in with why does a lack of fairness uh, make people angry or frustrate people? And I think that this comes from the idea that it's not that things are unfair, it's that we expected them to be fair if you can understand the distinction there. So what I mean uh, to go on to explain that a little bit more is that when, when we're younger, something that's done very intelligently and importantly if you have any sort of mentors is that we're taught that fairness, and fairness is important, that morality in that way is something we should have. And we grow up believing in this and whether it's religiously or without religion, we, we still believe in this kind of thing. And then when we go out into the world, we have emplaced in us a feeling that things should be fair and that we should act in that way, but we are then surprised when we go out and we see that it's quite the contrary that the world works on. The world works on a lack of fairness and that embitters us because you, you see this thing as you taught as maybe being a sham. You feel that you've been betrayed. If I was told that I should act with morality, with fairness, then why does nothing around me ever seem to work out in that way? Uh, so as I say, it's more that your, viol your expectation is violated than the reality of what's there. And to go on more about this, it's that what we see is not only that the world is somewhat unfair or very unfair, it's that within this world, it's not only that it's unfair, but that people who act without morality or who do not act fairly are often getting ahead. And that's, that's incredibly disheartening because we see then what's the point? That's what we arrive at is if I was taught that fairness is so important and A, people are getting ahead and B, that nobody seems to be acting like this, what is the point? And I would say, <laughs> although it's hard to see immediately, that those are the point. It's the fact that when the world around you shows that fairness is not so important and that most people in fact act contrary to it, that it adds depth and significance if you go against that. Our actions, the actions of a moral person count for so much more in an immoral world. Fairness means so much more when we're surrounded by unfairness. If you want to stand out as an individual, do what everybody else isn't doing. And if the world is entirely unfair, then act fairly. And you have this opportunity to be that much more of an individual within it. Uh, I would go on then to talk about the world making sense because it also means, like I said about being a child, you develop this expectation. When the world makes sense is when we, we are taught something and we're told that there'll be a particular response to it. And when the world doesn't make sense is when we put out this output and we get this crazy input back on us. And that usually comes from coached expectations of morality not matching what we see. And so just like I said, don't expect the world to make sense for fairness. Don't generally expect it to make sense. Don't expect any sort of return on investment because you've chosen to do something morally or plain of interest to you. What I mean is that if you came over to come to Japan or to work in Germany, don't expect the process to make sense. Flow with it and you'll realize that it didn't need to make sense. As long as you are open-minded to adaptation, then it can be whatever it needs to be. Something not making sense is still an opportunity to grow. It's usually only when we project our expectations out into the world that we are disappointed. If you are more accepting in a way that, I don't mean accepting that you go belly up and you give, on, give up on whatever it is that you want to do, but you accept the way that it is and you either circumvent that, find a way around it, or overcome it, you personally. There are certain immutable facts about the world that you can't change, but you can change yourself and you can adapt to them. So 
accept the chaos of this lack of fairness, accept this chaos so the job wasn't exactly going to be how you thought it would be, and you'll do so much better. It'll land you in so many more interesting situations because you didn't expect it to make sense. Which then allows me to arrive at my final point. And it's something, it's something very near and dear to my heart for something that I always said when I was growing up and at the time I thought that it made really, really good sense. And that was that when I had these different situations that arose that I was really, I was battling with morally, whatever, I would always say to someone close to me, I would say, I just wish I could be understood. You know, like, I mean, it's not even that I want the outcome to be different. I just want to be, I just want to be understood. If people could just see what's inside my head and why I acted the way I did, then that would make everything okay. And I think where this comes from is childhood, because we, we search out connection, we search out affection, um, we search out acceptance, but then we don't realize that we're losing ourselves to do so, that by wanting to be understood means that you're always asking for something from somebody else. If you want to be understood, you will always be in the power of other people. You will always need them to understand you before you can be happy. It will mean that the only decisions that you can make are popular decisions that everybody else agrees with and you narrow your ability to be yourself, to be an individual. And so I would suggest, <laughs> can't guarantee it'll work, it's just a suggestion, that if you want to find greater peace, it's not happiness. I think peace is something entirely different from happiness because we go like this. Peace is more an acceptance of all these different emotions that we'll go through, all these different experiences that we'll have. Stop wanting to be understood. Stop needing the decisions that you make, whether it's coming over to Japan and your family doesn't like it, taking a lower paid job, taking an artist career. Stop wanting to be understood for those decisions. Define for yourself what it is that you want to do and release yourself from the control that you give to other people when you say, please understand me. Say instead, I don't need you to understand me. I'm doing this because I believe it's right. So that's my little talk about don't expect it to be fair. And I hope that you find it interesting uh, because it's something that it never goes away. You, you think that when you're growing up that that's something that you deal with and you, you look at adults and you think that maybe they're not dealing with it. You think that old people, it's gone. These aspects of our lives, as long as you breathe, are eternal struggles, something that's going to go on and on and on and so we need to face them. We need to consider them in all these different ways that might lead us eventually, I hope, as I say, to something like peace. Don't mistake that for happiness. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. I'm excited to get on to the other stuff in the, uh, the rest of the week that I'll be doing. Uh, there'll be the videos following this, of course, if you want to check them out, please do. I did the Cherry Plum Blossom Park video previous to this with lots of sweet bullet time. I enjoy doing that. Um, the community is wonderful here. I say thank you and I'll say it a million times more. Thanks for checking out the videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.